and foremost. Uh, they're a team that has these very famous streamers. Sangyun and Snowflower are famously a duo streaming uh, partnership where they always play together. They're very well known here among the, the fan community in Korea. But for KT, a team, a professional organization, to lose to professional streamers is humiliating. And Najin already suffered that fate, so the question is, can Anarchy, without that element of surprise, because of course that was the first series and everyone was like, wow, look at Mickey, he's so good. They didn't actually account for his just pressure around mid, and the Lyra Mickey duo ran over Najin in that three-game series. A lot more respect's been paid around Mickey, and that's why it was kind of notable that when they picked up the win over SKT, Mickey was what, maybe third or fourth on the list when it comes to crediting who really drove that victory. Indeed, and that Cassiopeia will be banned against Nogne. Has been a solid pick for Nogne. He's played it a lot this season so far. He's most played champion. Now Rise, of course, banned on that red side. KT feeling that champion is very much first pick, first ban worthy at the moment. I feel like Anarchy probably want to be on the red side. They probably want to go for that assassin like you mentioned, but so much harder to do so on the blue side. It's always possible that the, the, the uh, early pick mid will come through from KT if there's a really high priority pick, but uh, much easier to go for that assassin when you have the flexibility of red side fifth pick. Yeah, the only one you can really pick up safely is that LeBlanc. Sure. And it hasn't, I mean, it's been fine, but it hasn't necessarily been the Zed that we saw against Najin. Sure. So Alistair also removed here by KT. Callista, a bit surprisingly banned by Anarchy. A Sung Yun apparently not comfortable in that champion. Ari, Ari against Nagne. And we talked about that a little bit earlier. I'm not impressed by Ari as a champion right now. And Mickey plays it. So I wonder what this means. It's really peculiar. This must be a very specific mid lane champion wants to pick up because literally, Nangne got kind of embarrassed on this champion, solo think, killed by Varus with his jungler watching in front of him. I think this is a first big victor. That's what I think. It LeBlanc, must be. It must be. That's the only sense that we can make of this right now. It's shouting out for a victor. Of course, Hecarim's another pick that they really value. Sivir also for the Sivir Hecarim synergy. There are a lot of picks that are up, but Victor, a lot of the champions that deal well with him in lane are on the ban list. Yeah, the, the one thing you have to worry about is that Gragas, though. If they first pick Victor, giving up the Gragas could mean that Victor gets knocked right into the front line. So the old KT, that I mean, basically the eight-game run that we're talking about, the big thing for them was their power in the drafting phase. Suddenly, we're already talking about priority picks that need to be snapped up. At least on paper, there is a very strong red side two picks. Victor, for example available to be picked up by KT. Yeah, and I think they have to take it away right now. Otherwise, you know Anarchy is going to go for that champion. We've seen Victor be pretty high priority here in Korea among many teams that, of course, banned out in all of our games in the previous set. Victor Thresh? Yep. Definitely a possibility if they want to deny the ability for Snowflower to make plays on the lane and someday He's in a battle right now for off-meta champions with Faker, wanting to go for that Yasuo, perhaps, in the top side. And we have not seen new Ash in Korea yet. It's not really a surprise. Famously, when Jinx was released, every other region picked it up, and Korea just wasn't going for it. In fact, we talked at the time, and you were just basically saying, look, no escapes. It's going to be slow for people to pick it up. Probably going to be the same story with this Ash. OK, well, it is Annie Siver. So KT is going to react to their recent tough times where they used to be this team that just loved to tower dive you with Sivir and Annie. Towards the end of last season, they were just all in you, very quick, very high kill wins. And it looks like they're going to fall back on that strategy once again. And guess who was banned in both those games against the Koo Tigers? Koo banned Sivir both games. Yes. And Arrow, he struggled on other champions, but Sivir's so much more straightforward to get going. KT is a team that loves Sivir, I think, unlike any other team in this league. Very reliant on that champion at the moment. A lot of power left in the draft. We mentioned the Thresh. That was the MVP performer against SKT Telecom T1. They picked up that big win on was Snowfire on the Thresh. They're going to lock it away, and the Corky taken as well. The lane matchup's just fine. The power spike errs more on the early side. Big question is, if you see that champion, it really does shout Zed, doesn't it? We've got more magic damage coming through on the lineup. I'm thinking Assassin Flavor is coming in the mid. I love Assassin Flavor. It's what does Assassin Flavor taste like? Uh, dried blood, uh, smoke. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's how I like my scotch. 
A bit of ash as well. Yeah, a bit of ash. All right, Maokai, consideration right here. Another dive champion, someday famous for his ability to flank and score maybe taking another stab at this Nunu. Now, score has typically been a very good Nunu, but mm. just extremely passive against the Tiger. And they had oh, that amazingly weird comp we mentioned before with the Rise and Nunu, where they didn't have any synergy with the Blood Boil. And Sivir, again, not really a big Blood Boil user, haven't been moving towards the Azir. So they move away from the Nunu again, earlier power spikes with the Rek'Sai. Wait and see where Annie can go with their drive. They can go really any way. They can go for the Varus Corky. really strong with the, the Gragas. The Varus Corky Gragas is again very similar trio that uh, Ku Tigers were able to use to take down. Uh, so KT has seen this first hand once already. And what would they play actually against that Varus with the RE ban that was a champion that Kuro managed to solo kill Nagne with that Varus into RE matchup, but apparently the respect is there for Anarchy as they look to blind pick a Varus and potentially a Cinder Hulk Fizz in the top side. One of your favorites. Indeed. Well, it's a strong 4-1 composition, I'll give them that. It's actually very good in lane against Maokai. We have seen Maokais win the matchup, so it's maybe tenuous like the Rumble Maokai that we saw multiple times in the previous series. And speaking of that Rumble, the Yodel finds a way, and they go with Rumble. Yeah, great poke off of turrets here for Anarchy that basically they can drop Explosive Cask or Equalizer to solidify a Siege and take out a tower. I really like that combo. I agree completely. Excellent Siege when you've got the, the Corky and Varus, and it's mixed damage Siege as well. Very high line physical damage, very high line magic damage with the Corky Rockets. And as you mentioned, Explosive Cask, it's not the old AP Gragas where you just throw off a cast, half health, everyone get them off their turret, but it's the same thing. You're going for turret damage. Uh, by pushing people and displacing people away. And they're going to look for an assassin. They'd already banned the Ari. They're wondering what's le left in the pool. And it might be Fizz. It might be Fizz, but that will leave them with limited wave clear options in the Siva. mid lane. In the mid lane. Sure. Uh, it, and especially if a 4-1 siege starts, they may have some trouble. Instead, going for a Twisted Fate, the back line initiation. That's a great pick, actually. That's nice to see. We haven't seen a lot of Twisted Fate, but it has been starting to crop up. It matches the wave clear of the Varus. Both of them have very uh, high line damage when it comes to either the wild cards or the, the Q. Can I look to take the cleanse? I guess thinking more defensively, that will hurt his roam and his global initiations, but he got so much CC in lanes from the likes of Annie, from the likes of Maokai, CC in general. Massive on the side of, of KT. Well, this is how they like to play. Very aggressively going for the dives, going for the ganks, and then just snowballing very, very quickly in the game. So KT kind of returning. Now Anarchy putting together a composition like the one that the Ku Tigers used to beat them. Maybe sensing that they're going to be weak to this siege. They certainly looked it, but this time, KT has a much better draft. They have the tools to disrupt this back line. And that Varus, if Nagne gets a Zonia's, is dead. And that's a really good point. It's they're playing against it, but look at the adaptation. Now they have Maokai with the flank engaged with the home guard potential. They have Twisted Fate, as you mentioned. Even has the cleanse to guarantee the gold card into the Zonia's. Will not be able to CC him and kill him before the Zonia's. And even Annie. Flash Annie with the Siva Speed. How do you say safe as Mickey and still do damage? He's got a lot of range, but it might still not be enough. I don't think this is enough. There are too many tools to attack the back line from KT. You know, and if they can hit an item power spike, the Zonias on the TF could very well seal this game up. Well, it's Anarchy versus KT Rollster game one. Let's get into it. A lot of fans tonight. They're growing. They're growing as an orc, growing with their popularity. It's good to see. They've just taken a win off SKT. So what other time to really get into full voice? Sure, not a series win, <laughs> but a game nonetheless. And I love the fact that KT have been able to actually find a draft that works against what might develop as a real meta combination. This Varus Corky or Double AD in general has been doing a lot of winning recently. As Fixer and Snowflower just donate gold over to the Annie. Yeah, that's right. Fixer. Free money. Hit skeletons, free money. 
That's my motto in life, Papa Smithy. Right, how's that working out for you? <laughs> I need more skeletons so I can get free money. Look, I'm sure that Thorne will find some of those skeletons. <laughs> All right. Well, they're going to back off right there, actually. Mickey taking a lot of damage, looks like. Nagne getting to him just a tiny, tiny bit. I think that the lantern had to be taken first right there from Snowflower. Awkward, of course, makes Delaney much weaker at level one. If they look for a lane swap, it won't be a big consideration. I guess you could just use it to tank a bit of the Krugs if you do see the Krugs start. But uh, yeah, nice draft on both sides. My issue, I guess, for Anarchy, and as you have alluded to, is that you kind of only have the explosive cast for disengage. Of course, Snowflower can do some work with the Flay and the box himself, but you need to almost explosive cast two of these threats, otherwise one of them is going to get through. Well, also the problem is, is that the Chain of Corruption and the Equalizer are going to have to be used in very weird situations just because KT can attack you from like three angles at once. So there's not going to be a lot of value in the AoE that Anarchy is using in this game and Fixer just being as annoying as possible right now. He has a W stun. He's going to not take it. Smite used. Yeah, forces out the Smite at least in the jungle forest. That will decrease the speed on the next camp. So just successfully being super annoying is the Anarchy. And that's what you get when you start weak side jungling, Baba Smithy. It's really become a common thing. I didn't see this much in the LPL, but it seems like in OGN, the greedy start is kind of how I've rationalized it. What is with all these junglers starting the weak side? I think it's fine if you can actually just go for the buff first and then move on. And to be fair, this was a very conservative weak side's jungle start. Like, they were in the camp furthest away, so they weren't going to be disrupted. And it didn't really result in anything either, but just a little bit of annoyance. I guess maybe the theory there is that usually the support has to go and help with the freeze. So if you're at the further camp, maybe you're, it's going to be slightly later, so safer. But uh... the, the theory is, is that if you just freeze with the AD carry and they happen to be in the lane, you can lose the you can lose that trade and then start to snowball lose the lane from there. Right. Because your AD sure. carry. Uh, is the one who's very far forward in the freeze and only has that one potion. So that means that the the support usually has to stay in lane just to make sure that there isn't somebody going to pop out of a bush and it suddenly becomes a 2v2, right? And it feels like KT, though, have been the ones to actually win out in the buff trade. They picked up three buffs, Monty, so they're the ones that, I guess, started on the weak side, started on the big buff, didn't get harassed as much, picked up the three buff start, and already Anarchy on the back foot. Yeah, that's right, and that's what the buff start allows you to do, too, if you're careful with it. It does get you more time. Now they're going to start fast pushing right here. This is very KT. Just go for the fast push right now. Try and deny as much as you can and accelerate the pace of the game. Just denying out the turrets. They have the advantage of the Sivir, so they have more turret damage compared to the Corky. And Corky's still committed to the freeze. So it feels like KT are running this game and Anarchy are happy to play passive. And this is the way also that you beat a more amateur team or a less experienced team. So is much that, clear shot calling needed now. Yeah, you just, you go through, you play aggressively, you force them to react to you and hope that you have more practiced instincts than they do and that they're going to make a mistake. Anarchy not making any terrible errors yet, not really committing to that top side, which could have been their undoing. Instead, they're going to bounce the wave, so no fast clear on the turret and instead swap back into a 2v2. So very interesting start here from KT. Did take, like you said, a minor advantage based on that Annie invade early on in the three buff jungle pathing they managed to execute. And now they're hoping that someday is going to be able to make Iksu overextend in the top side and therefore set him up for the gank after the tower bounce. Something that you've talked about a lot is that Rumble is very likely to overextend when he's looking for trades. Very hard for him not to do damage to the minions. And even though we're talking about a level one flame spitters, it all adds up. It's still 20, 30 damage that will start to push this wave in. You could even see with how the wave was clumped. It's going to slow push towards some days top lane. Yeah, Lyra has to recall right now and get his booty up into the top lane so Rexai's that he's already in the air. Yeah so that they can actually clear this out. He needs to stand inside the, the lane brush while the push is going on. We'll see how fast he can get up into that side of the map. Uh, he is going to drop a ward in there and 
score too low to make a play at the moment, but he can return after a fountain heal and see what he can do. Score has so many options this game, by the way. We didn't even talk about this. What lanes to gank for? Annie, TF with the gold card, and a twisted advance in the top side. This is a jungler's paradise. A jungler's paradise. Targeted CC, a gangster's paradise almost. <laughs> but, uh, but targeted CC in every lane is literally the dream. And he has his own flash, instant, uncleansable CC himself. Yeah, very nice set up right now and also i mean i get it's not even who they've got it's also who they're against i mean varus and and rumble yes please one varus and rumble yes i would take it as a as a jungler anytime and jungle is your role from memory <laughs> well the very rare occasions i play yes, yes your vi is legendary <laughs> play vi every game that's my plan acquire elo uh yeah indeed Sang Yoon and Snowfire both on the back foot, but the CS very, very even in the bot lane score. He's got the lanes to gank for, but so far just doing the counter jungling and farming. Indeed. Well, I'm surprised that he's actually just playing so passively this time around after that little bit of a proxy farm because he does have a lot of options. Again, we discussed this, but Anarchy coming out with fantastic early wards again. He's called to bottom lane. Sung taking a lot of damage. Might actually die to Sivir, but the flash on Burrow will do it. Fix is super, super low. He might live just. And that's one kill unanswered for KT. Yeah, that's right. Although it does go onto the jungler. So not the highest priority, but they make it work all the same. Cooldown boots pretty fast here for Nogne. Just wanting to spam out cards, keep that lane cleared. He's losing this lane quite handily. 12 CS is the advantage currently for Mickey. Remember, he's opting into a TS, not buying immediate power. But the base values on that arrow, I believe it adds up to about 400 damage at level 9. You hit that max range arrow, and Twisted Fate, he's gone for boots too, just to try and dodge them, and he's yeah. still eating plenty of poke. Yeah, a bit of a problem right there. We'll see what he can do with a blue buff in addition. Mickey has the wards to just punish him, but Mickey able to play aggressively because, again, look at the warding around the mid lane. There's nothing that they can do. They've got pink wards everywhere right now. Score has very limited gank options. I feel like someone definitely deserves lots of credit on Anarchy. Maybe it's the whole team, but they understand warding better than most rookie teams I've ever seen. It's, it's actually quite incredible for them to be this good at it this early on and this is more like a, a warding pattern we would see for faker on sk telecom than anything else they know at least their strengths they know how to play around mickey and his abilities in this mid lane and it's it's all led up to this change of corruption, corruption hits but instantly cleansed lira was no real position didn't have explosive cask available so it was optimistic for mickey but look they play around this mid lane player is 10 cs up not really any downside because the chains of corruption very short cooldown and actually right there it was i think a little bit presumptuous to use the cleanse at that time not really necessary in any circumstance with the jungler still level five so For some reason the word presumptuous used in that particular case made me <laughs> laugh how dare you yeah. well that's how i feel about the unnecessary use of summoners, Papa Smithy. How do you feel about fizz with Devourer in the jungle? I am galled. Galled? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're expanding vocabularies, at least, on this cast. Well, that's, I aim to educate the youth of the world in, in English. As an English major myself, Papa Smithy, I feel it's my duty. Well, look, it's a noble endeavor. <laughs> you don't watch your League of Legends for <laughs> big words, but we try and sprinkle them in when necessary. No, you watch me for big words. I'm telling the audience why they watch me right now. Okay. <laughs> I've had the same things leveled at me, so between the two of us, we could drop some uh, good ones. You had some excellent words in our last cast. I forget them now. One of them is amazing. Yeah, so I'm told I'm quite sesquidalian, so there you go. You're just making up words now, Monte <laughs> Cristo. <was laughs> We're waiting to see what happens with good old Someday. We've seen this matchup, what, three, no, twice already today. Of course, Smeb went on to the Riven in the last game. Maokai has, tradition, has consistently been opening up advantages, even though firsthand I've seen lanes where Rumble has run over a Maokai. Yeah, this, it does tend to, at least in Korea, go the way of the Maokai, though, especially with that. There's a lot of gold, though, in that early start with the Doran's Ring. So it comes at a price, uh, definitely for the win, and Mickey again showing some accuracy on that Varus, and Score wants to 
give them a little room for pause, but Nogne's been bottled up in this mid lane. They have to clear out these wards so Mickey can't play like he is right now. And Nogne's had to build suboptimally. He's had to go for boots too. And look, it's always a flexible option, but it's not really the power where you want it with your early 1,000 gold purchase. Now he's very overextended. A Rek'Sai is going to come in. And there's a blue card lock that's not going to be enough. Someday wants to make a play right here. Snowflower is, of course, there, though, tearing Mickey out of harm's way. At least that all followed, though. He was playing aggressively, but he had both the jungler in the enemy jungle and also some backing. And Sun is going to get turret dive. And there's the stun into the stun into the boomerang blade. Ixu is there with an equalizer. Not sure how much that's going to do. Snowflower back on his way down. TB onto Timbers that's taking the turret. And Ixu is just going to go down right after that. What a wonderful TP from Sunday. Just excellent knowledge. Don't see that enough. And at the same time, it looks like Mickey will get mid turret. That's quite a heavy price to pay for two kills unless they pick up the turret themselves, and they won't. Look, I think it's a pretty even trade because the power Absolutely. of taking out the mid lane turret at, what, 11 minutes into the game, we often see this structure still up 15, 20 minutes into a game. Yeah, absolutely true. And the fact that they retain their turrets as well, very nice for Anarchy Siege composition. But that said, they're still at a gold deficit in spite of the tower loss. And this is still a composition that is going to run them over in the late game because of their lack of a tank line and the number of ways that KT has to engage. KT gonna bounce back though and actually punish the recalls look like with a dragon. They don't have the ultimate up from Twisted Fate, but he's gonna wave clear and get to the dragon if he needs to. It doesn't even look like it's gonna be cold over. It's in perfect vision of Anarchy, but there's no way for them to react. So look, at least they're trying to get something, although Thresh is close. Doesn't quite pick it up. No, Nagne also threatening on the outside. Fixer's there. Seeing if they can get a pick right here, they're going to walk into a pink ward, and that'll cause the duo lane of Anarchy just to back off. It's the last time I saw a comp similar to KT's as the poke already doing a lot of damage from Mickey. But the last time I've seen this sort of comp was actually from Vici Gaming in the LPL. They love to run Lich Bane, Twisted Fate, and just split push instantly. And one of the reasons why this is a great game for it, it's a rumble. We already talked about the Riven rumble matchup. Twisted Fate. He's got the instant wave clear. It's pretty hard for the Rumble to punish him or even land with, with the boots two to boots one advantage, any sort of CC. So if you just split push this Twisted Fate, obviously you can instantly get to other lanes. It empowers the rest of your team to overextend. You should be so confident if you're on this KT lineup that there will be multiple members because we've got double globals, but well, triple globals actually, Rek'Sai, Maokai, and Twisted Fate can most of the time instantly react to any sort of skirmish. Yeah, and this is uh, this composition is very reminiscent of the one that Samsung ran with Bard instead of Annie, actually, uh, with those triple globals and the ability to get to any lane on the map extremely quickly. And he makes it scary because, you know, you're split pushing in top, you're split pushing in bottom, Flash Tibbers comes in, suddenly it's a five-man turret dive. They have a lot of flexible options. We already mentioned the fact that it's against a squishy double AD backline, so they have the engage happening there as well. KT have a lot of options, and it's heartening to see them move away from Nunu Rise, Oriana, kind of like what, yeah, what is going on to... <laughs> against a very similar comp. I actually prefer this composition with Bard over Annie because you can engage from the black, from the fog of Speaking war. Speaking of engage. Oh, here we go. Looks like that's not going to result in anything, though. Chain of Corruption thrown out. Mickey going to take some damage on it on Burrow, but they can't find the follow-up. They desperately want to blow Mickey's summoner spells, but have not been able to do so. So I like the Bard better because you can engage from the Fog of War, pop Sivir ult, and then be on top of them by the time that they come out of stasis. And then there's no there's no counterplay to that from a back line uh, like the Varus and the Corky. So that's a, a fun combination as well, but perhaps Fixer not feeling comfortable on that Bard quite yet. I feel like the Bard comp has a higher ceiling. I think it can be better, but yes. you need to be so confident both as Bard and with Bard. Again, he's one of those champions that warps how you play quite dramatically, and we unfortunately haven't seen any more Samsung Bard because Wraith has hit the lineup over Luna. And Sweet has been out too, on Janera. <laughs> All the Bard boys are just in solo queue, obviously practicing their mechanics, and we might see a Riven-like resurgence from the Bard mains. I, I hope so. Fingers crossed. Bard's a cool champion. He is, and he's great with compositions with TF and Sivir. He's so. great at fighting around Scuttlecrab. You get those stuns through the Scuttlecrab. <laughs> That's really satisfying when you pull it off. All right, Mickey's still pushing up aggressively. All of his 
uh, flanks are warded How very well. How little cares does he have at this point? He's so Zero. overextended. Well, he, but he has no threat either. I mean, you look at this, Snowflower playing back right there. They have so many wards. They can see everyone on both sides of the mid lane, so he's absolutely free to keep punishing Nogne. I have not seen people solo farming and poking under an inner turret at 15 to 16 minutes into a game, but the pathing from Snowflower, it was the Thresh that got him the MVP. His team is there to relieve pressure and allow him to basically ruin the day for Nagne. To the point where this Twisted Fate side lane ganks, barring one, have been completely absent. And it's also pinning him there so he can't split push yep, too. Yeah, that's the thing. He's stuck with a Lich Bane, doesn't have any sort of mana regen, so obviously has to use blue cards more than he wants, has to balance mana oh, stain. Fixer fixer just gets caught and destroyed, drops the Tibbers, but it does nothing. Fixer on a little bit of a face-checking mission there. They knew he was coming. Ward's already there, and that's going to prompt an even harder siege from Anarchy as they're really doing a good job of putting the heat on during their power spike. They're putting the heat on against a team with three globals. That's the surprising thing is that I thought KT were going to play the full court press. It's Anarchy just from their smart rotations. And we've said it again, we'll say it again throughout the season, the warding, it's beautiful. It is, but Ixu has been hung out to dry on this top side. Someday's been increasing that lead and chipping away at the turret. So this won't last forever for Anarchy. They're kind of each team winning different parts of the map at the moment. But Look, this Rumble is... losing is, is the one champion yep. you're kind of content with. That. It's never ideal to have someone losing, but if you're going to leave someone out to dry, it's the person with the lowest item uh, floor, as in the lowest amount of items to be relevant in the team fight. We've always talked about it. Double magic penetration, okay. It's not the backline diving Zonya's flame spitter rumble, but it's still a very relevant threat. Absolutely. Now, KT finally starting to respond with some deep wards of their own. Spotted out by a ward though, so. But they forced them off the tower just for KT's sake to get another tier one, and they're not going to be able to trade very much with this. They drew anarchy. Twisted Fate to the bottom as well, that they're needing to use maybe one resource too many to make some of these trades super worth. But it will be worth if they can get the dragon. So sure. these wards were put down not only to zone off that tower to get the wave forward, but because the timing around the dragon is really going to be ideal. Someday also going to pick up that farm. And Ixu just having to slowly push up into the top side. So can KT also get a dragon off of this? It's going to be the question. That will make it definitely worthwhile for them. The Righteous Glory complete for Someday right now. They want to push out these lanes one more time and see if they can create a pick. But all those wards they dropped, already cleared by Anarchy. And they have wonderful vision around the Dragon area. Mickey has been charging up this man. I mean, very, very fast. Probably going to be about 23 to 25 minute charge on that one. They're even going to contest this blue buff. Sign of a top team. Get control and push for one resource more. That's right. Now, Destiny going to go down. Where is he porting? Actually, mid lane. Looks like they just want to get position on that wave or maybe just needed the vision and then had somewhere to go to get a slight advantage. So that's not going to be around. And suddenly Mickey is safer and safer. Now he knows there will be not a Twisted Fate in the back line instantly with the Destiny. One less threat. OK, still KT have someday and fix it to potentially get on top of this Varus. But with all his summoners available and the Chains of Corruption, it's just a battle of attrition. They're trying to get uh, punish Anarchy for moving around and kiting downwards onto this uh, mid lane turret, but the turret's still very healthy. Uh, I don't know about leaving Ixu here like this, though. It's a little bit of a danger. Someday gets caught by a chain of corruption straight into a death set, and Someday's still there, pops his ultimate. Snowflower gonna be the first to fall. Arrow gets knocked against the wall by an explosive cast. Nogde with the flash forward onto the gold card, but there's just not enough follow-up. Lyra tries to get onto Nogde, finds himself in the back line. Arrow is there. Arrow is autoing. Arrow gets the kill, but Corky, who is he going to get the cleanup here? Mickey wants the snipe. Score going to take a little bit, but that'll be a two for three trade in favor of KT Rolster. One crucial factor, Monte Cristo. Mickey was out of mana for the majority of that fight. There were so many potential snipes, but did not have blue buff, so they were not fighting with really the capability of this Varus to take over a fight to justify the really high amount of items he's already completed. He's even got the armor penetration duo done. 
Mickey is team fight ready, but he needed the blue to be a real big factor and was kind of ignored during that fight. And now the timer in terms of this power spike is really on the Zonia's hourglass right now for Nagne. How fast can he get that item? He's so far behind in farm, but once he gets that, Mickey is very unsafe in the back line. So, have flash score. Score. score gets caught. They're going to get at least a bit of chip damage, though Nagne's there to relieve pressure. Maokai's top lane still has teleport available. They've got a lot of wards. They kind of feel like they have to justify their excellent warding with a dragon. But KT doing everything they can to harangue them out of a five-man push onto dragon. All right, Speed Shrine for Anarchy right here. They are well in their power spike with Varus and Corky. Could be dangerous. KT doesn't have to fight this, but they're going to go for it anyway. Fixer wants in. Hits the W on a Snowflower. Snowflower chunked out once again. Hope coming in from the wild cards. Still a flank threatened from Arrow and from Fixer right here. Poke raining down onto KT Rolster. Now Fixer and Arrow are going to rejoin, and that is going to be a dragon score with the smite. Crucially, 2-0 in Dragons. Anarchy were a bit undecided about how aggressive to go. They had all their ultimates available, barring the box from Thresh, but chose to back away. Now they're trying to punish with the rotation, but Twist of Fate will be there and does have good wave push. Anarchy got really rattled right there. They should never have given up their position on the scuttle they grab the like they shrine. did. They had the speed shrine. They had the poke. All they had to do was use that speed advantage to dodge the poke coming in from KT. Well, getting their own down, they got bullied out for really no reason. Again, it was just psychological warfare is really the only way we can put it. They had so much vision. Now you can't start to think about how much those wards cost in terms of inventory space and uh, just efficiency of gold. Three pink wards from KT. Lyra's Lyra. going to get caught. You can't be there right now. Chain of Corruption goes down, doesn't land onto Arrow. They see everyone with that destiny. If ever there was a game to not go on a solo warding mission, it is this one with triple global coming through and even pick CC from Fixer. Just poor play from Lyra. Poor understanding of the comp he's against. It's still so difficult to play against this if you're, if you're Anarchy, though. This is a comp that is custom built to shut you down. So it's a, it was an uphill battle from the beginning for Anarchy with this composition. And now, you know, with the two dragons gone, this power spike is waning rapidly. Sang Yun actually going for a cutlass before getting those sword shoes. Not sure about that one. I know he's afraid of someone getting close to him here. But this is a very good situation for KT Rolster to be in. And it's just delaying the time where Anarchy can just set up and poke under a turret. That's exactly what they're wanting to do. But we already mentioned it's very difficult to do against this comp. Arrow is a bit lazy with his recoil. He's going to die for free. He thought he was in a position where he wasn't going to be spotted. But the answer was that he certainly was. Yeah, very sloppy from Arrow. He was shopping. You can see. <laughs> yep. Otherwise, he would have hit that spell shield. Pretty easy block onto Snowflower's Q. And it said not respecting that warding, and that's something that everyone has to really get a read on. Now, there's not really anything that Anarchy can do off of that. All the waves weren't in their favor. Can't take a dragon. So the pick kind of meaningless in the long run, and particularly when KT has such a strong objective advantage right now. And considering that Anarchy has already fallen behind on turrets, when they're the one running the siege mid-game siege comp is a very bad sign. Yeah, both turrets and dragons working against them. Crucial two dragons already completed by KT, and that's after the prepping, the ward play, as we talked about, has been on point. To then lose the dragon is super awkward for this Anarchy mid-game comp. Look, it's definitely not a bridge too far. They're going to pick up the answering turret at this point. They have excellent itemization onto their carries. It's just... How do you keep them safe against all the backline threat? And Nagne, how scary is he going to be with that Zonia's Hourglass where he can actually provide the primary engage? He can come in from an opposite flank from mm -hmm. someday and force the burn of an equalizer or an explosive cask in a very ineffective manner, a less than ideal. And what, what Twist of Fate does with Zonia's is it just makes your positioning that more on point. You can be so aggressive if you have him. You can have Maokai push with Reckless Abandon top. Twisted Fate has popped the ultimate. He's going to go for the flank. Wow, look at that. Finds Mickey on the side. Combos him to 50%. Arrow with the flash forward. Killed by score, actually. And Lyra finds himself isolated and also a corpse. Yeah, that's what we expect to happen. A preview of future fights. I think he had cleanse available. Crucially used the flash and not the cleanse, which 
Don't know how much that will help him in the next fight to not have to reposition as well. No op opportunity to go oh. into any sort of untargeted ability. And this could be another further turret dive. You can really see how scared Anarchy's getting. And oh my, goodbye. Oh, Sonyun actually living for a while right there. Gets out with the help of a flash, but Iksu not going to be quite so fortunate. There's the unburrow. There is the kill. Snowflower going to be chased down all the way to his inhibitor. Goodbye. Really poor target selection. It doesn't even matter because it's a 5v3 scenario. They could have picked up a perfect ace in that particular situation. Sonyun somehow survived. Someone got bored, decided not to <laughs> auto-attack him anymore. They get the objective that's far more important to them. And th the reality of this game, Monty, is that as this game goes on, Twisted Fate going to overextend, Malka going to overextend, even the jungle camps are going to be a bridge too far for Anarchy to pick up, and this gold is going to get massive. He's going to see the replay coming in. Just watch to it. Twisted Fate goes for a very good flank to the back line. Nothing Mickey can do and dies instantly. I love the decisiveness of Arrow with the flash and the ult right there as well. They know they have Mickey isolated. If he dies, Everything comes unraveled in terms of their ability to withstand the siege as well. So they just set up again. Score going to go through, take the Raptors right here. Song Yoon gets out with a flash, but look at this setup from Fixer. Waiting for the go button. They see the everyone with the tremor sense as well, and so that's just going to be a flash. Song Yoon somehow stays alive through this, gets unburrowed on, and just lives with the heel and the flash off the back. And now Ixu going to go down as well. Arrow mopping up kills left and right with his auto attacks, just running all the way through and taking a turret and now another turret for their trouble. Every time the destiny is available, you don't know whether it's a bait when they're pushing in so aggressively onto structures. That's the fourth turret of the game and TF having free time and bot. And what I wanted to say too about how in the heads of Anarchy KT are right now is when that Destiny went up that killed Mickey in the last fight, Snowflower flashed immediately. He was so scared of the Destiny going down. As soon as the TF ult come up, he flashes. That's a big waste of a summoner cooldown right there that I don't think was really necessary. With the power of picking up maybe three dragons and some turret advantage themselves. Unfortunately, KT are the teams that have been able to do that, even with their late game scaling. Lyra's going for the emergency, misses the explosive cast. The Rumble Equalizer burns down. Fix is dead. Anarchy, they get two kills, and Mickey's still alive. But the backline cavalry is here. Nagne going to actually zone you out right now. He will be focused down. Some days, the last man standing in an epic 1v3 that he's going to win. It would appear Ixu getting low, Ixu twisted advance, Ixu gets hit by the arcade smash, and will the sapling be enough? He slowed, he's twisted advance, now it's time for Lyra. Tank wars, someday wins. But so much closer, remember there was about an 8,000 gold lead coming through before that fight for KT. But the difference between two fights, Mickey and Sung, you both live, specifically Mickey, did a lot of damage that fight. He has all the armor penetration. He's even got the Yomu's Ghost Blade, which is becoming a core on Varus. You pop that Ghost Blade, pick up the first kill, suddenly you get six seconds of power, because that's how Varus's passive works, and still have quite a lot of auto attack damage to go and supplement your poke. So a much closer team fight, but how many of the, more of those can Anarchy engineer? KT also decided to fight that in a choke with an equalizer and a bunch of pokes. So there's that aspect coming into it as well. About Don't bring your facts to this discussion, <laughs> Monte Cristo. It's now a super close game. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> I reject your hypothesis, sir. But yeah, that, that fight was about as ideal as it could have gotten in terms of terrain use for Anarchy as well. So. Probably not going to get a good one like that unless KT really can't figure it out. Not going to take red buff. You know, he doesn't even care if there's a ward there. Doesn't have many well, cares. Lyra, no. Oh, no, no wow. Actually used the smite right there. Has to explosive cast. Still gets hit by the Timbers. Wild cards on his head. And there is a chilling smite. Can they finish it off? The answer is yes. Score so, steals the kill for no reason. Now they're ever present across the map. This is all without Civic Group. Just going to push down the mid. Another outer turret will fall. Only one going to be left on the map after picking up this objective. And someday, you can tell by his health bar that he's pretty tanky. He's even going to go in right there. Equalizer down, Chain of Corruption down. There's not going to be follow up thanks to the Varus ultimate. And there's the Righteous Glory Pop KT starting to back off this one. Arrow has to flash out of the Flame Spitter. 
but not before he picks up a kill on Desangyun. Two defenders remaining. That'll be enough considering the low HP bars for KT to pack their bags and head home. So much gold in the bank. Rek'Sai, 2,000 plus gold. Siva, 2,000 plus gold. Going for the Bloodthirst, no rush to pick up any sort of armor penetration because it's literally no armor on the side of Anarchy. Yeah, that is a, that's a bad situation to be in where the Siva can just rebuild a Bloodthirster and Infinity Edge. And still armor cut pen. everyone like butter. <laughs> it's uh, not, not good. No. Well, I really like the comp we're seeing coming out of KT this game. They, I think they learned from their mistakes from the Ku Tigers. But can you fault Anarchy for just a couple days after that match, thinking that they could maybe try the same tactic? Arches Glory used again back away. No, I don't. I think you go for it, but it's kind of heartening if you're a KT fan. Say, look, they obviously reviewed the VOD. They talked with the analysts. Now they're more equipped to deal with Double AD that a lot of teams are defaulting to. It's not Varus Vane. It's Varus Corky, which. I personally prefer more. You have that mixed damage poke that's so hard to deal with. Snowflower finds five members, but uh, somehow lives. <laughs> yeah, they weren't actually particularly decisive on that engage right there. I really think KT could have gone for it, but they're also setting up. They're developing their split push right now. Nagne on the side, doing a lot of work. So there's not really a rush for KT. Look at their vision on the top side as well. They have 100% control over the Baron pit. They have a great split push. They're going to get something regardless of what happens. And it's a risk to pick up your Raptors. It's a risk to actually go and fight for the Wolves if you're Anarchy because of these Globals, like we mentioned, because of all the advanced wards that KT have been able to push up. It's one of those games where eventually you keep pushing up waves until there's just been more than three minutes since Anarchy have even had a chance to put down a ward around Baron. And there should be one of these Barons. It's almost uncontestable for Anarchy. And that should be just maybe the last window into the game for Anarchy closed and KT to round it out. Uh, absolutely. Well, they could do this Baron really at any time right now. They could force a face check at any time. KT actually maybe playing too far up on these lanes in terms of the split pushing. And they are really going for the full vision denial right here. I mean, they could do this. There's the stun and Snowflower gets caught. Gold card will lock him up. Rexai's just walking into and the back here line. here we go. Are we going to see that destiny? Yes, we will. Oh, goodbye, though, to Nagne before he can use the Zonia's Hourglass. Now they're still moving forward. Great stun, and that'll be a cleanup probably onto Ixu. He's on top of Arrow, but Arrow going to get the fadeaway boomerang blade for the kill. Yeah, Sung is actually going to get aggressed onto. Someday goes back in, goes for the turret dive, tanks a lot of turret shots, so probably going to fall, though. He's Maokai, super tanky, high base boost, lives! and takes down the AD carry. Now fighting against Lyra, gets another passive prop. Someday's gonna live. And he is Arrow actually forcing the flash onto Lyra right there. We've seen two really good Maokai fights tonight. One from Smeb, one from Someday now, playing on the brink, using that auto attack to get up. But uh, KT still taking some lumps right there as the Foss Bomb combo just annihilated Nogde before he could hit his Zonias. Speaking of annihilation, don't know if Thresh has the damage. Has Ignite up, really wants Arrow to step through one of these walls. Doesn't do it. You know, it's probably a bad <laughs> point in the game when you try and duel the enemy Sivir who has Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, it's really, Static Shift. It's really the Bloodthirster. When you see that, you should know you can't actually duel her anymore if you're a Thresh. Probably would have met more uh, stream viewers if you'd been able to pick up that solo kill. So <laughs> maybe not the worst reason to go for that one. It's going to be the fourth dragon. So didn't think KT need another win condition, but add that one to the list. Yeah, was, they, they want everything in this game, Papa. Just take it all up while they can. Why the hell not? Anarchy, to their credit, have played well. It's just I feel like the champion select I wouldn't even say let them down. I just feel like KT have done everything right. They've picked well. They've played around things well. Some days unkillable, and just no one can make him accountable. Now that he's finished the Thorn Mail. It's just a disgusting amount of armor. And this is the Baron that's been prepped for the last, what, seven minutes of the game. There's never been a chance to get wards around. Scrying all comes through. Snowflower's doing his best, but how do you get anywhere near with all this oh, pixie Oh, Sanyu needs a gold card to start the fight. Bad equalizer, not going to do much of anything at all. Ixu going to pay with his life for that, and now just an attempt at a disengage, but Someday's not done yet, just moving through the enemy team. Arrow on cleanup duty, Arrow gonna get the triple kill. Nagne, Snowflower, Quadra kill. Can they get the pentakill? There's the stop, Lyra. Is he gonna go down to Arrow? Another pentakill, guys! Double pentakill! <laughs>
So good. Great job from KT to prep that one. Two pentakills in back-to-back -back games. One for Smebs Riven, one for Arrows Siver, and that's going to be the end of the game. The best exclamation mark to end what has been an entertaining game. They don't have the minions and the people are going to respawn too, but there's the surrender. KT rolls still. We wondered if they bounced back from what was a poor series. They just snuck over against IM and then objectively poor against the Koo Tigers. This is the KT Rollster that kind of led the way at the start of the season. They're just definitely picking up. And crucially, their original strength, the pick bands, much more on top of those this game. Absolutely. And at the end of that, Arrow ends 15, 2, and 10. He actually, that is the biggest kill performance we've had by any single player this season so far, 15 kills. But again, way, way up there. But uh, for me, I mean, someday was just really the backbone of that series. 7 1 and 16 on the Maokai. A 23 out of 28 kill participation from the Maokai, um, amazingly, is actually lower than the 20.